Good morning, please. Good morning. Can I invite you all to stand up? How many of you are grateful to be here? How many of you are thankful for what God has been has given you this week? Can I see a raise of hand? If you are thankful, let's respond with a praise and with prayer as we make the sign of faith in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's lift up. Let's clap our hands. our prayers who knows our burdens and I just want to share 
one of my favorite Bible story, which is about an underdog named David facing his biggest enemy, which is Goliath. And if we think about it, David, a young man, he has 0% chance of victory facing this big enemy in front of him. But what struck me is David was able to defeat Goliath because God is with him. He was able to achieve victory because God is with him. It's the same with us. We may be facing, some of us may be facing big problems, a big enemy right in front of us this past few weeks. But let's remind ourselves, us alone, tayo lang, we cannot win that battle. But with God, we can achieve victory. Amen. So today, we're going to sing a new song of praise. And let's mean every word that nothing can stop us. Because we have a victorious God. So let's surrender everything to our God. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph.
You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Come on, if you believe, raise your hands up. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. virus that has claimed lives and has affected many we pray for your grace for the people tasked with studying the nature and cause of this virus and its disease and off stemming the tide of its transmission guide the hands and minds of medical experts that they may minister to the sick with com competence and compassion and of those governments and private agencies that must find cure and solution to this epidemic. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Grant us the grace to work for the good of all and to help those in need. Grant this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever amen and father as one family as one community we would like to lift up to you our concerns our prayers lord miracle healing for those suffering from cancer diseases healing a family tree deliverance from habitual sins and every form of unfaithfulness the power to encourage the family to go back to jesus attend the mass and the feast uplift the spirit of all evacuees in batangas breakthrough in career and love life this year 
healing of relationship between a husband and wife and a change of heart of that of the husband for the approval of a scholarship and new job opportunity and we pray lord for financial freedom for all the people in this place this 2020 in jesus name amen and we will celebrate also lord your goodness to us your blessings that you have given us this past days this past week for the give of new job with good employees compensation for the opportunity to visit the, another country for being ranked one on them head father for the gift of clarity and receiving and deserved merits thank you for allowing a sister to pass the exam and land a job in a bank for successful surgical procedure of a brother for all the graces and blessings and being able to reach out to those people in Ta'al and for the success of SFM Single Ministry Fellowship and for all the answered prayers of the people here shout thank you Lord and we declare victory today in Jesus name situation today are you ready for God's word for you if you're ready let's pray our favorite prayer here in the feast together today I receive all of God's love for me today I open myself to the unbounded limitless overflowing abundance of God's universe today I open myself to God's blessings healing and miracles today I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day today I proclaim that I am God's beloved I'm God's servant I'm God's powerful champion and because I am blessed I am blessing the world in Jesus name amen let's honor the word of God Thy word is the lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. Sino po ang nandito last Sunday? Can I see raise up hand? Yeah. Last week I told you that Jesus after Matthew 2, after niyang ipinanganak, Matthew 3, biglang binata agad. Ayan. So ano nangyari doon sa 30 long years before His public ministry? And this is the one billion question. What did Jesus do for three decades in Nazareth? Ano kaya ang ginawa niya? May mga iba nagsasabi na namalit si Jesus, na may mga five or seven years old. May, may mga myth na ganyan eh, na may pinagaling siya, mayroong namatay na dab, hinawakan niya na buhay, yung ganun. But you know, he didn't heal anyone yet. He didn't even cast out demons during that 30 years of his life. Wala. Anong ginawa niya? He lived as a quiet person, a quiet carpenter 
in that area in Nazareth. Craftsman, entrepreneur. Negos- negosyante kasi yung tatay niya eh. Di ba? Gumagawa ng furniture. Sigurado ko yung furniture. Baka building, nakahoy. <laughs> Craftsman siya, entrepreneur. Hindi siya nag-preach. Which brings me to an important message for all of us. That following God means following Him outside the church from Monday to Saturday and engaging in that nitty-gritty part of our daily lives. Yan yung pagsunod sa Panginoon. Not just when you come to the feast, not just when you attend the Mass or attend the prayer meeting, but it's following Him in the nitty-gritty of your Monday to Saturday. At ganyan yung ginawa ni Jesus. He lived an inspiring life for 30 years. That's why this morning I would like to preach on this one big message. Ready? Live an inspiring life. You can live an inspiring life like Jesus. So let's go to our reading this morning. Last Sunday I told you that we're going to use one particular chapter and verses for the whole series, for the whole February. Bakit ganon? Because we want to teach you that when you read the scripture, one verse, sometimes you will see a different messages. Yung pag nagbabasa ka ng Bible, sino sa inyo nagbabasa ng Bible? Kakaunti. Sino nakakita ng Bible? Yung pag nagbabasa ka ng Bible, minsan di ba may binabasa ka, tapos iba yung message na sa'yo, tapos after two, three months, binasa mo, uy, iba na naman yung message. That's that's what we want to do. We want to, anong tawag doon, himay-himayin itong story na to. Ano yung mga messages na pwede natin makuha? That's why this morning, we'll continue with Matthew 3, verse 1 to 10, NLT version. And it says, In those days, John the Baptist came to the Judean wilderness and began preaching, began preaching. His message was, Repent of your sin and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. The prophet Isaiah was speaking about John when he said, He is a boy shouting in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord's coming. Clear the road for him. John's clothes were woven from coarse camel hair, and he wore a leather belt around his waist. For food he ate locust, sabi nga, locust, and wild honey. People from Jerusalem and from all of Judea and all over the Jordan Valley went out to see and hear John. And when they confess their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. Sabi nyo nga, confess their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming to watch him baptize, he denounced them. You brood of snakes, he exclaimed, who warned you to flee the coming wrath? Prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sins and turned to God. Don't just say to each other, we're safe for we are descendants of Abraham. That means nothing. For I tell you, God can create children of Abraham from these very stones. Even now, the axe of God's judgment is poised, ready to sever the roots of the trees. Yes, even the tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into the fire. Can you place your hand over your heart? And repeat this prayer after me. Jesus, this morning, I want to listen to your words. I want to be like John the Baptist who inspired the people around him. Use me to inspire my family, my friends, my office mates, every people that you're sending my way. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Thy word is the lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. Palakpakan natin ang ating Panginoon. Thank you for Jesus. Bless your name. Speak to us today. You can sit down now. And as you sit down, sabi mo nga sa katabi mo, God will speak to you today. Let's be, give a big hand to our worship team. Thank you very much, guys. We're 
are still in our series for February, Dawn of an Era. And this morning, we're going to talk about, this is the title of my talk, Eat Locust. Sabi niya nga, Eat Locust. But before I go to that topic, allow me to share with you a story. Merong isang mama, meron siyang, anong tawag dito yung lip? Ang tawag dito? Clip. Hair lip. Clip. O, oh, ngungo na lang, ngungo na lang, pinapahirapan ko pa kayo. Meron isang mama. Pasok siya sa restaurant, tapos ngungo siya, sabi niya ganun dun sa waiter, Waiter! I will order! Sa so, lapit ngayon yung waiter, sabi, Yan, sir! Ano ba ang order nyo? Sabi nung mama, sabi, Uy! Ngungo ka rin! Yan, sir! Ngungo ako! Merry good! Merry good! I feel at home! So, sabi nung waiter, What's your order? Uh, I want you to give me a hamburger, french fries, and one large pork. Ah, alam niyo, nakawa niya? Ha? Okay. So, Mukha may gift din kayo, ha? So, sabi nung winner, Yes, sir, very good. I'll bring it to you. So, punta siya doon sa kitchen. And then, mamaya, paglabas niya, nung waiter, tinawag siya nung isang mama, nandun sa kabilang table. Sabi siya, waiter, waiter. Sabi nung waiter, Yes, sir. What's your order, sir? Sabi ni, sabi ni Bingot, sabi niya, Hinungaling, no? Hindi pala niyang hungo. Medyo nag-aalit siya. Tapos nung pagkatapos kung muna order, tinawag ni Bingot yung, yung waiter. Sabi niya, Waiter! Ano ka rin o? Sabi mo, hungo ka? Sinungaling ka? Sabi ni waiter, Sir, hungo ako talaga ha. Huwag ho kayong maingay. Siya ho ang nilolo. Oo. Siya daw ang nilolo ko. Now I'm sharing that to you. Tanya niyo ako bakit? Wala lang. <laughs> may ibig sabihin niya. May ibig sabihin niya. Now, let's go, let's go to, our, to our reading today. When John the Baptist called the people to repentance, if you look at the scripture, other, other version, you will see that a lot of people repented. Thousand people repented. Nung sinabi ni John the Baptist, magsisi ka ng kasalanan nyo, magsisi kayo ng kasalanan nyo, nagbago sila. Thousand people. That's why, here's our goal in this series. Naalala nyo last week, anong sabi ko sa inyo? How can we be another John the Baptist to those people around us and call them to repentance? That is the goal of this series. How can we be empowered by God so that those people na nakikita natin na mali yung ginagawa sa buhay, we can call them to God. Now, pag kinumpara mo yung Pharisees with John the Baptist, you will see that they also called repentance to the people in their time. Pero kakaunti lang yung na-convert, kakaunti lang yung nag-repent. But John the Baptist, about thousand people according to the scripture. And one reason we uncovered last week, ito sa mga nandito, ito yung unang dahilan why, we, why, why John the Baptist is so successful in making people repent of their sins because he is in the platform of mercy. Naalala niyo last week na si John the Baptist, sinasabi niya rin sa mga tao, ito yung sabi niya in Matthew 3 verse 1, Repent for your sins and turn to God for the kingdom of heaven is near. So nang gagaling siya doon sa mercy, the platform of mercy, he gave them hope. Sinasabi niya, balik na kayo sa Diyos para mapagharihan kayo ng Diyos. Kaya yung mga tao bumabalik. And here's the second reason. Why, by, bakit bumalik yung mga tao? Bakit nagsisi yung mga tao? Because He is coming from the platform of authenticity. Sabi nyo nga, parang yung ngungo. Oh, nakuha nyo na, bakit may ngungo. No? Yung authenticity. Doon siya nang gagaling. Alam nyo, si John the Baptist, for those who or not here last Sunday, John the Baptist is a hermit. Alam niya na may hermit, di ba? Yung suot niya, yung parang, yung, ang tawag doon, yung balat nung, ng hayop, tapos meron siya leather belt, so he is a hermit. Tapos nakatira siya sa desert, at hindi sa Sesame Street. 
Kermit yata yan. <laughs> Iba yata yan. No? So, he's a hermit. And because of his love for God, mahal na mahal niya kasi ang Diyos, he gave up the luxury of life and lived a simple life. He lived an inspiring life. Let's look at what verse 4 says. John clothes were woven from coarse camel hair and he wore a leather belt around his waist for food. He ate locust and wild honey. Sabi niyo nga, locust. Sino sa inyo nakakainan ng locust? Grass hopper. Ayan, meron na. Alam niyo, ang Greek word for locust could mean insect. It could be an insect. Parang katulad nito. Ayan. Or it could also mean a carob tree. Makikita mo yan sa Israel. Ayan. Pwedeng, pwedeng insect, pwedeng the fruit of a carob tree. But I really, I, I really believe this, this, that John the Baptist eats or ate locust. Kumakain siya ng insecto. Why? Because in Leviticus 11.22, let's read this together. Ano sabi dyan? The insect you are permitted to eat include all kinds of locust, bad locust, crickets, and grasshopper. Tama may iba-iba pa. May locust, may bad locust. Hindi ko alam kung para kanino yung bad locust. No, baka para sa walang buhok. Hindi ko alam. Ha? Pero <laughs> pwede, ka, pwede mong kainin. Parang, parang tayong mga Pinoy. Sino mga Pinoy? Magtaas naman kayo ng kamay, Pinoy na kayo, ayaw nyo pa. Parang gusto niya ata mag i pa. <laughs> Yung, tayo mga Pinoy, di ba, kumakain tayo ng aso. Tama? Sa iba, sa ibang bansa, ayaw nila yan. Yung parang, ya, yeah, ba't ka kumakain ng aso? Ano yan, a man's best friend. Pero tayo, kumakain ng aso, bakit? Yung, lasang kambing, okay din yan, pulutan. Tama? Sino sa inyo kum- nakakain na ng palaka? Oh, di ba? Ano sabi ng mga nagsas- nakakain ng palaka? Lasang manok. Di ba? Lasang manok. Eh, ka kakain pa ako ng palaka? Di manok na lang. Di ba? Pero, di ba? Kumakain tayo ng palaka. So, parang parang ganun yan. Basta, basta wag ka lang kakain ng paniki. Ha? Kasi, lasang coronavirus yan. Kakawa yung, kakawa yung paniki. Ano? Siya yung napagbintangan sa coronavirus. Kakaawa siya. Biro mo, nagtatanong na nga siya sa sarili niya, ba't ako? Kakaawa <laughs> naman. <laughs> ba't ba tayo napunta niya sa coronavirus na? Balik tayo kay, kay John the Baptist. Si John the Baptist, he was so focused in his mission and he didn't think too much of himself. Hindi niya, naiintindi ko ano yung itsura niya. Basta I will go to my mission and bali, okay na yan kahit anong itsura ko, walang problema sa akin. Pero yung mga Pharisees, kabaligtaran ni John the Baptist. You know, minsan, iniisip natin, itong mga Pharisees, masasamang tao. Na, naisip niyan before. Have you thought that? Uh, that kind of thought? Ang sama ng mga Pharisees kasi lagi pinapagalitan ni Jesus. Parang lahat, purus Pharisees, mga walang iya. But can I surprise you? Surprise, ha? Wow. <laughs> Ay, isang linggo lang kayo nawala. Ano ba yan? Nakalimutan na. Ang mga pariseyo ho, hindi ho sila masamang tao. Hindi sila masamang tao. In fact, if you look at the historicity of the Pharisees, hindi ho sila masama. They're so zealous with their following God. Doon sa mga utos ng Diyos, napaka-zealous nila. Yung nap- napaka-passionate. And if you look at their, their, their Pharisees na in in Jerusalem hindi sila tumitira doon sa city they are living in a separate area tapos yung magkakasama doon yung mga tao lang na sumusunod doon sa utos ng Diyos and they they, they detach themselves doon sa, sa mga tao na hindi sumusunod sa Diyos they're so zealous na talagang parang yung alam mo yon yung talagang sinusunod nila by the letter yung batas in their scripture that's why they are not bad people they're not they're good people. In fact, they're so good na minsan may utos ang Diyos, dinadagdagan nila. Yung parang bawal ito, ay, dinadagdagan nila yun. Na, ay, dapat bawal na rin natin ito. They add to the command of God. Why? Because they want to follow God to the, to, to the letter. Now, ang problema lang ito, they position themselves in a place of high regard. Why? Kasi nga, nagagawa nila yung mabuti, nagagawa nila yung inutos ng Diyos. Sometimes they have this thinking that those people who are not following God, 
they look down on them. Yun na naging problema nila. Parang ganito yan eh. Meron pa kayong kak- naging kaklase na matalino. Meron? Uh, siguro kayo yung matalino kayo, hindi kayo nagtataas ng kamay. Ano? Y- yung kaklase mo na, sabi ng teacher mo, oh, ha, ganito ha, magsasubmit kayo ng ng uh, report. Kailangan yung left margin, right margin, dapat 0.5. Ha? Yung taas, dapat 1 inch. Tapos yung letter, dapat ganito lang kalalaki. Wala pang font nung araw, sa computer, di ba? So, dapat ganito lang kalalaki. Dapat ganito yung sulat. No? Tapos yung kaklase mong ito na magaling at matalino, ay talagang sinusunod niya for to the letter. Talagang pag nagsabit niya, sasabihin ng teacher mo, very good, ang galing mo. Tapos ikaw, yung pag nag-submit ka, yung sabi ng teacher mo, ano to? Ha? Report po. Talaga? Report? Y- yung ganoon, yun parang sa'yo okay lang kahit na kulang ko lang yung mga, yung mga requirements. Ano sabi nung kaklase mo? Ano, ano sabi nung klase mo matalino? May mga ganyan tao, yung parang, yuck. Diba? <laughs> naman to? May instruction na hindi sumusunod. Yung ganoon. That's the problem of the Pharisees. Because they're so good in following God, they look down at those people who do not or find it hard to follow God. Kaya nung si Jesus dumating and He mingles with the sinners, He mingles with those who are lost, itong mga pariseyo, iniisip nila, kung propeta talaga itong si Jesus, kung talaga ito ay Messiah, alam niya na yung kasama niya, yung kausap niya, masasama yan, makasalanan yan. But since he ate with them, ang isip nila ay, hindi ito propeta, hindi ito mesiyas. Kasi naki- kumakain siya kasama ng makasalanan. E eh, ayaw ng Diyos yung makasalanan. That's why the Pharisees, they hated Jesus. Kaya si Jesus, in one, another part of the gospel, anong tawag niya sa kanila? Hypocrites. Hypocrites. Another word for hypocrites are impostor or pretender. You pretend. Kaya ang sabi ni Matthew 23, ito yung sabi ni Jesus eh. Everything they do, let's read this together, is for show. On their arms, they wear extra wide prayer boxes with scripture verses inside and they wear robes with extra long tassels. Pag tinig na may itsura ng mga Pharisees, sa meron silang dalawang box na kinakabit sa katawan nila. Ano yung dalawang box na yan? Leather boxes, maliit lang sila. And inside that, merong four passages, may mga papers na maliit na merong nakalagay na passages. And in other version of the Bible, they call this pilacteris. Sabi nyo nga, pilacteris. In Greek, in, and in Hebrew, it's tefillin. So parang ganito itsura niyan. Sinusuot nila yung isa nakalagay dun sa left arm, tinatali nila rito, and one in their forehead. Now, ba't nila ginagawa yan? Tanong nyo ako, bakit? Trip nila yon, Huwag natin pakailaman. <laughs> Pero ito ibig sabihin. In Deuteronomy 6, ang sabi dito kasi ng Diyos, ito yung utos sa kanila eh. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Familiar? Yes, you will see that also in the New Testament, which Jesus said. Na? At ito yung ginagawa nila, sinusuot nila to the letter. To the letter na kailangan yung salita ni Lord nandun sa forehead nila at saka sa arm. Now, bakit nila ginagawa yan? Because of this. Ang sabi ni Lord sa kanila or in in their in their old in the in their scripture ito yung sabi in Deuteronomy 11. So commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these words of mine. Tie them in your hands and wear them on your forehead as a reminder. So they follow to the letters. And not only that, they also wear tassels in their robes. Ano yung tassels? Parang ganito, yung mahabang yung pagsumasa, inabutan niya na ba yung mga panahon ng bagets? Kasi no, mabot ng panahon ng bagets. Di ba? May, may meron mga tinatali-tali tayo diyan. Eh, may yung nakaka, nakalagay. Tapos kumakain, oh, yung cannonball. Di ba? Ah, ganun, mga ganun, ganun niya habang sumasa. Okay. Ganyan yung tassel. Nagrebigla ko, nagreminis. Grabe. No? 
Again, why? Because of this passage. Ito, yung, ito naman ang sabi sa Deuteronomy 11. Throughout the generation to come, you must make tassel for the hems of your clothing and attach them with a blue cord. When you see the tassel, you will remember and obey all the commands of the Lord. Instead of following your own desires and defiling yourselves as you are prone to do. Now again, dun sa ginagawa nila, based on their action, based on, on their ritual, are the Pharisees bad? Are the Pharisees bad? No. Pero bakit sila may problema? Now why, why am I explaining this to you? Siguro sabi ng iba, Brother James, bakit mo kinikwento sa amin yan? Why? Friends, look at me. The problem with the Pharisees are not the rituals. The ritual is okay. The ritual is can make them holy. But the problem is with their motives. Ano yung dahilan? Ba't nila ginagawa yung ritual na yan? What is the motives of the Pharisees? Now, tingnan natin anong sabi ni Jesus sa kanila. Everything they do is for show. For show. Bakit? Kasi parang sinasabi nila sa mga tao, if I can do this, dapat gawin mo din. Dapat gawin mo din. Dapat walang excuses. That's why you need to change your ways. That's why the people who heard them, and they're coming from, from the platform of arrogance, anong sabi? Ba't ako magsisisi? Magiging ganyan lang ako. Have you experienced that in your life? You heard someone telling you to change your ways? And they're coming from the platform of arrogance. Yan parang holier than thou. Meron kayong na-meet na ganyan? Yan parang, di ba, nakikinig ka ba? Hindi, ano? Pero saan ka nakikinig? Dun sa tao na nagsasabi sa iyo na kaya ako ginagawa ito kasi mahal kita at ayoko mapariwara ang buhay mo. Yes? Sige, palakpa kayo. Tama? Tala iba sa inyo sabihin, Brother James, I don't think I will make the same mistakes. Hindi ko naman magiging mali siguro yan. Bakit unang-una, wala akong prayer boxes na may passages. Meron ba kayo dito? Baka meron kayo dito? Ha? Prayer boxes na may passages. Brother James, ang alam ko lang sa Bible actually, dalawa lang story. Unang story, yung bakit, o ano ang wala kay Adan at Eva. Yun, alam ko yun, kung ano yung wala sa kanila. Pero yung other Bible verse, wala akong alam. Pangalawa, ang alam ko lang is bakit si Noah, habang nasa ark, hindi nang isda. Yun lang alam ko. Alam niyo ba kung bakit? Ha? Alam niyo ba kung anong wala kay Adan at Eva? Alam niyo kung ano? Wala silang bienan. Kaya sarap ng buhay ni Adan. <laughs> dal kasama niya si Eva at mga hayop. Ah, hindi dal wala silang dinan. Tama ba? Kasi wala naman nakalagay doon. May magulang sila eh. So wala nga silang lolo't lola. No, wala rin parents. Now si Noah, bakit hindi siya nangisda habang nasa ark? Alam niyo kung bakit? Pag-isipan niyo to ah. Dapat alam niyo to. Pag tinanong kayo ah. May Bible exam. Baka lumabas yan. Ba't hindi siya nangisda? Kasi dalawa lang ang warm. <laughs> Kanina pa ang to eh, kaya natawa. Ang bagal ng processor mo ah. Di ba, pag ginamit nyo isa, wala na, patay na yung mga worms. Na? Ay, 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 nagbibiru lang ako. Friends, look at me. Tayo mga Christians, tayo mga Christiano, we can make the same mistakes. We can. How? Halimbawa, tayo mga Katoliko, di ba, we like to wear big crosses. Yung nagsusot ka ng cross, bakit? Just to say, I'm... I'm I, I, I belong to Jesus. Yung cross mo napakalaki. No, bakal pa. Yung tipong pag gumanong ka, tusok baba mo, patay ka. Ganong kalaki. And so, gusto gusto natin sinusot yun. Diba? Or maybe you are a Protestant and you have this wonderful Bible, a waterproof and a smellproof Bible kasi nilalagay mo sa kilikili mo. Huh? And you can carry that and you can, you can tell people, ay, ako ginagawa ko to ba't ikaw hindi mo ginagawa? Tama? Or, May kaibigan ka, nag, tin, nagkita kayo, sabi siya, how are you? Tapos ikaw, anong sagot mo? This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Psalm 118. 
How about you? <laughs> Pwede. Di ba? Yung, we can be like Pharisees. And yet, we fail to inspire those people around us. Bakit kaya? Why? Maybe because of this. Let's, let's watch this video.
That's Brother Albin Barcelona. He is the feast builder of Bay Area PM. Tanong mga katabi mo, totoo ka ba? Sina, sige, tingnan mo sa mata. Sino, totoo ka ba? O panaginip lang. <laughs> Parang kanta yata yun. Ano? Totoo ka ba? You know, si John the Baptist was able to inspire people kasi totoo siya. Because he is authentic. He was the real deal. He lived an inspiring life. Now, alam kong, alam nyo na to, this is, this is obvious, but I need to say this, that if you want to be a world changer, you must change your inner world first. Am I right? Pag gusto mong baguhin yung mundo, kailangan magsimula, kanino? Sa'yo. Halimbawa, sino dito ang mga magulang? Magulang, magulang. Magulang talaga kayo ha? Yung gusto mong sumunod yung anak mo dun sa mabuhay ng, ng tama, sino sa inyo may gusto na? ba diba? gusto natin? Pero mayroong mga ibang magulang na yung alam mo yon yung, yung sinasabi rin sa anak, iba rin sa ginagawa. Yung anak, makinig ka ha, da, masama ang magnakaw. Masama ang magnakaw. Tapos umuwi yung anak mo, may dalang ball pen. Ano sabi mo, anak, bakit ka nagnanakaw? Di ba sinabihan na kita, masamang magnakaw? Bakit ninakaw mo yung ball pen ng kaklase mo? Hindi pa ba sapat yung dinadala ko galing office? <laughs> Alam niyo natin, narinig niyo natin. Eh. Pero di ba? May ganun eh. Or, anak, anak, masama ang chismis. Masama ang chismis. Huwag ka magchichismis. Ano ba yung nakikita ko sa Facebook parang chinichismis mo yung kaklase mo? Sabi nung anak mo, okay po. Eh, ano pong ginagawa niyo, mama? Kamayingay dyan. Nagpapaprayer ako. Prayer chain sa mga kasama natin sa feast. Ang sisters, pag pray natin, anak ni Sister Anna Buntis. <laughs> Hindi alam ko sinong ama. Send to all. Ang <laughs> Anak, masamang ano ah, makipag-away. Masamang makipag-away. Pero, mami kasi sinasabi nung, masama yung sinasabi nila sa pamilya natin. Pero anak, okay lang yan. Huwag ka makipag-away. Kasi sinasabi nila, si daddy, walang kwentang tatay. Kasi lagi nilang trabaho yung inaatupag, walang, walang panahon sa atin. Okay lang yan, anak. Pag-pray mo na lang siya. Eh kasi si kuya, sinabi rin ng kapitbahay natin. Well, hindi daw nag-aaral, kaya bagsak ng bagsak. Kasi nga, hindi natututukan ni tatay. Okay lang yan, anak. Pag-pray na lang natin yung kapitbahay. Kasi alam mo ba kung sinabi sa'yo? Ano sabi, sa, ano sabi sa'yo? Ikaw na ikaw nanay na walang kwenta kasi burara kang nanay. Nasaan niya kapitbahay na yan? Nasaan yan? <laughs> okay, Baka hindi ka totoo. Now why do we need to change our inner world? Because if you want to effect change and inspire people to change, dapat halata. Halata sa ginagawa mo yung sinasabi mo. Yes? Friends, this morning, I'll share with you kung paanong maging totoo. This is a, yung mga katoliko, maybe you, you already know this and some of you, you are already doing this. But I'll share with you this morning a recommended 500 year old Catholic ritual na makakatulong sa iyo in being totoo. And this is what we call the daily examen. Have you heard that? Sino sa inyo gumagawa na niyan, yung daily examen? Wala. Kasi di ba, sabi mo brother James, yan nga iniiwasan ko nung nag-aaral ako eh. Mm-hmm. Pati ba naman ngayon, nakagraduate na ako, nag na ako ng fees, may exam pa, wag na. And daily exam. This, this is uh, created by St. Ignatius of Loyola. It's like taking a bath daily. No? Pero hindi lang isang ligo. And this morning, I'll share with you a crude explanation of this beautiful ritual. Now, you need to understand that I'm also neophyte. No? Ito ay ginawa ko lang kanina umaga. 
Hindi naman. Ginagawa ko na siya. Pero bago, bago pa lang din ako, so, so you need to understand. Kaya itong aking explanation sa inyo, medyo mabilis lang. But I want you to, when you go home, I want you to, to research on this more. Because I believe that this will help you in being totoo. And this will bless your life to the max. Gusto niyo ta? They want this? Now, ano yung daily exam? It's, it's a once or twice 10-minute pause in your day to meet with God. Once or twice, 10-minute. Or pwede yung 5 minutes, magsimula ka muna. And ang importante lang, you alarm yourself. Ako kasi inalarm ko yung sarili ko, nilagay ko siya doon sa calendar ko, na mag-a-alarm siya ng mga 1 o'clock, kasi tama-tama, tapos na yung lunch. No? And uh, I extend 10 minutes for 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 this. And then sa gabi, ganun din, 10 o'clock, naka-alarm din yan sa akin. Now, now, bakit mo gagawin yan? Because, tama ba, na it is easy to see God in the retrospect. Ano yung retrospect? Yung may nangyari sa buhay mo dati, tapos ngayon, pag binalikan mo, ano sabi mo? Kaya pala. That's kaya pala theology. Ay, that's why. It's easy to God in the retrospect, but it's hard to see God now. Tama? Yung lalo na pag habang may pinagdadaanan ka, parang ang hirap makita ng Diyos. Pero pag nadaanan mo na, matagal ng panahon, tapos binalikan mo, dun mo makakasasabi na, ay, kaya pala. That's why it's called kaya pala theology. Now, this will help us to see God in the introspect. Yung ngayon, habang pinagdadaanan mo, pwede mo makita ang Diyos, pwede mo marinig ang Diyos na sinasabi sa'yo, ito yung dahilan. Ito yung kailangan mong gawin. Now, Itong 10 minutes na to, there are five steps. Ilan? Five. Here's the first one. This is the first step in this 10-minute meeting with God. First is presence. Sabihin nyo nga, presence. What is presence? You need to remind yourself that you are in the presence of God. Yung pag, yung isipin mo, Lord, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in your presence. It's wrong, wrong to say the, let's put ourselves in the presence of God because you cannot... Get outside the presence of God. Because you're always in the presence of God. Kaya kahit may pinagdadaanan ka, kahit gano'ng kabigat yung pinagdadaanan mo, alam mong hindi ka nag-iisa dahil kasama mo ang Diyos. Yes? Pinapalakpa ka niyan sa kabilang sinihan. So, put yourself or remind yourself of the presence of God. And here's the second one. Gratitude. Sabi niyo nga, Gratitude. Ang dali natin when we come into the presence of God, ang dali natin isa-isayin sa Diyos yung mga problema natin. Yes? Yung pagdating mo, Lord, uh, Lord, kailangan ko nito. Lord, pahingi nito. Lord, pahingi nito. Panginoon, pahingi nito. Panginoon, pahingi nito. Panginoon, pa- panginoon, pahingi nito. Yan na yung mo sa Kanya. Why? Because it's easy for us to go directly to our problems. That's why we need to start with Gratitude. Sabi niyo, gratitude. Ano yung blessing na nakuha mo that from from this time and from the time you started the day? Ano yung na blessings na nakuha mo? And here's the third step, discern. Sabi niyo, discern. Tatanungan mo siya, Lord, how are you working in my life today? How are you working in this situation in my life today? Sabi ng isang Jesuit, just with priest, examine is like ukay-ukay. Sino sa inyo mahilig mag-ukay-ukay? Ayan, di ba? Pag may dati uso eh, pag ukay-ukay, talaga pinupunta mo yan eh. No? Ano yung ukay-ukay? You are rummaging in that pile of, of clothes and you are looking for something. Meron kang hinahanap, kaya hinahalukay mo, tapos mamaya makikita mo, ay, eto. Let's examine. Do you know that God is in in your in your in your situation, at hinahalukay mo, nasaan ka dito? Ano yung sinasabi mo dito? Ano yung gusto mong gawin? Ay, yun pala. That's discernment. And fourth, sorrow. Sabi nyo nga, sorrow. Sino yung sorrow? Yung nakabayo. May kapa. Being aware of your weakness in the presence of God. Yung may nangyari sa sa umaga mo, tapos you, you, you responded negatively, then you acknowledge it, kamali ako, kamali ako, Lord, sorry, forgive me, 
Alam ko mali eh, pero ba't, ba't ko nasabi yun? Sorry, Lord. So you ask for forgiveness. And this is the last one. Surrender. Sabi nga, surrender. Surrender is drowning your weaknesses in the grace of God. In the grace and mercy of God. Asking God, Lord, tulungan mo ako. How to respond to this situation? How to to act on this? Alam ko, hindi ganun kadali, pero sige, tulungan mo ako. Yung boss ko, hindi madaling pakasama, pero tulungan mo ako. Help me. Yung kaibigan ko, tulungan mo ako. How, how to respond to that? Niloko ako. How, how to respond? Friends, this is not a moralistic self-perfection exercise. But it is checking where you are. Checking your heart. Para maging totoo ka. And if you want to live or want to change the world, change your world, change your small world, you need to live an inspiring life by being totoo. Can I invite you to stand? This morning, we're going to do a different activity. What we're going to do is we'll try to experience this examen. Gusto nyo? They want that. Ang gagawin natin is just simply lang. Again, isipin, balikan natin yung lima. What's the five one? Presence of God. Reminding yourselves of the presence of God. Second, gratitude. Third, discernment. Anong ginagawa mo, Lord, dun sa sitwasyon ko? Number four, sorrow. sorrow. Kung meron kang mali dun sa, ginawa, dun sa pinagdaanan mo. And number five, surrender. surrender. So that's what we're going to do this morning. Let's try to to meet God in this situation that we have this morning. Or kung hindi mo nagagawa pa ito, kahit yung kahapon, balikan mo. Kung meron kang pinagdaanan kahapon, medyo mabigat, medyo parang hindi mo kaya, parang tinatanong mo sila, Lord, nasan ka? Where are you? Then let's try to do an examine. But before that, allow me to share with you my story. Pwede? So that malaman nyo yung, yung, yung power nung, nung examen. Alam nyo nung, you, you already know this, before transferring here in, in IMAX, and na-share ko na to eh, in one of our talk, si Brother Buddy left us, di ba? And nung malaman ko yun, talagang it, it's a shocking experience because I know him, and not only that, he's, he's, he's so great in, in our ministry here in, in the Free South Mall. Isa sa mga inaasahan natin dito sa Free South Mall. He gives the talk and he shared his love to the people diba, outside. Kaya pag nung, nung nawala si Buddy, talaga may mga lumalapit sa akin. May yan, Brother James. Alam mo, si Brother Buddy, ganito. Si Brother Buddy gave us this. Si Brother Buddy, nung nagugutom ako, may binigyan ako ng pagkain. Yung ang daming, ang daming experience na ganun. And si Buddy, malaki yung hawak niya dito sa ating ministry. And not only that, si Buddy is one of our giver here in, in the feast. Kaya nung, nung nawala siya, tami, yung bigla, yung nandun ako sa favorite area ko where I do my talk. Af, pagkagaling ko doon sa ospital, and I, I, I stayed there and I do a sort of examine. Parang, like, Lord, where are you in all of this? Bakit nangyari ito? And, and other than that, may mga ibang nangyari pa, na may mga ibang leaders na kailangan pumunta sa ibang bansa. Yung, yung mga ganun, ha? nawala din sa feast. And I started asking him, Lord, where are you on this? Why are you allowing this? We're blessing a lot of people in the feast. Dami doon, pag dumarating, nabibless. Dami doon, may pamilya na babago. So why are you allowing this? Tapos kinuha mo pa yung isa sa pillar nung, nung 
peace out mo. But I thank God. Sabi ko, Lord, thank you. Because you're able to allow me to serve with this guy. This guy who showed me how to care, showed me how to serve God passionately. Where are you on this? Paano na yung peace? Alam mo, ito, ito lang sinabi sa akin ni Lord. During the time. James. Start to trust him. Start to trust what I'm doing. Start to trust your maker. Because I am the one who made the feast. I am in the center of the feast. That's why we trust the maker of the feast. In that moment, alam mo, na- naiyak ako, pahiya ako, para, ako nga Lord. No? Lagi ko sinasabi ito, lagi kong pinipreach ito sa mga tao. You trust God, you trust God in your situation. Maniwala ka, hindi ka pabayaan ng Diyos. Maniwa- And yet, I'm in that moment na parang, hala, nasa na yung tiwala ako sa Diyos? Ito ako nagtitiwala sa tao. And I ask God, Lord, sorry. Sorry. Surrender na ako. Bahala ka na. And we thought that peace out mo, natatakot kami noon eh, na wala na, sarado na yung peace. And yet, January 12th, Here we are. We're still worshiping God as one family. Now friends, this morning, this is what I want us to do. Let's do a five-minute examine of your situation using this five steps And let the Lord speak to you this morning, especially if you're going through something in your, some things in your life. And allow God to speak to you. Let's pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's remember that we are in the presence of God. And He's here. And He wants to speak to you. He wants to reveal something to you today. listen to him.
sin now. Thank you for the peace in our hearts today that you have spoken to our situation. We thank you for teaching us this morning how to see you in the present moment and not just looking back in retrospect. And this is what we ask of you that whenever we come before you, we come before you in prayer, we come before you in our daily examine. May we hear your words. May we see what you're doing in our lives. Some of us here who came here today with heavy heart, with situations, Lord, that they cannot understand. And sometimes because they cannot see you there, they find it hard to move and step their feet into the direction that you want them to go. That's why my prayer is that whenever they spend time with you, spend time in your presence, may they find you there. So that they will have strength to face whatever situations that they're in in their lives. This morning, we thank you and we receive your love, Lord. We thank you for your presence. And we, we receive your mercy. We receive your changing us. We receive you today. And all this, we pray in Jesus' name. I have been 
your prayers, could be in your gadget, could be in your booklet, lift them up and to see the love of God. Maybe you have fears right now, doubts because of your situation, lift them up and believe that God is here and is doing something in your life today. Father, we surrender to you all our dreams, all our prayers, our fears, our doubts, our sinful ways everything Lord that is hindering you every wall Lord that we have we're surrendering it today and we pray that you penetrate us penetrate our heart and also Lord this morning we claim that whatever it is you place in our heart prayers petitions desires we know one day we will have them. One day we will receive them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. I give my heart. I give my soul. I give my strength. Lord, take control with all my life. Live an inspiring life. Thank you. Thank you, God. Let's visit it for some of our quick announcement. Brother Mix. Alright. First announcement is can I see a raise of hands sa lahat ng single people dito? Woo! Ayan. So, to all the single people we have, 
a love life retreat on March 21 to 22. And the venue is Hospitalier Sisters of Mercy, Muntinlupa City. So malapit lang po. Investment fee is 3,000 pesos. For more information, contact Brother Benjamin Presto. So yan po yung contact number niya. You can take a photo po. Or andito po siya sa gilid. Ayan po, kumakaway. And next is Women of Worth. So we have a Women of Worth on... March 14 to 15 at Montserrat, Montserrat Center for Religious Formation. Investment fee is 3,800 pesos only. So to all the women out there. And next is Restore. So this is a uh, Feast Alabang Jewels. Restore 2020. Uh, your, this will be your first quarterly gathering on February, February 23. Sunday, 1.30 p.m. and 4 p.m. PM. So, our speaker will be Sister Lalaine Gogna and our guest speaker is a family life specialist, psychologist, guidance counselor, and award-winning author, Dr. Michelle Alignay. And last is Flame. So, for Flame, this is a free legal and clinic on February 23, 2020, 9.30 a.m. to 11 45 a.m. at Feast SM South Mall IMAX Theater. So for the flame, uh, you can now pre-register for this outside near at the book table. Thank you. Uh, this is a district uh, ministry. The flame natin, yung mga lawyers, they they gather together and they serve. So this is a free uh, advice uh, clinic. So you register to on sa table. Meron tayong table don and come back here February 23 for the free advice. Okay? So, legal advice, hindi love life advice. So, you, you, ano, you, you grab this opportunity. Kasi mahal doon magpa-advice, di ba? Sa legal. Sa, kaya maraming maraming salamat sa mga lawyers natin. Thank you. This the first session we have 200 and this session we have 556 this morning. Let's all stand and let's offer tithes and thanksgiving. Again, one reminder, last reminder. Paglabas po ninyo, either dyan sa kanan or sa kaliwa, meron pong dalawang boxes dyan. So, kaya kung pinagilid ko na yung isa para pwede kayong dumaan tas doon kayo magbigay sa susunod na para hindi kayo nagpa-panel dyan we will try to to make your life easier kaya pag meron kayong mga suggestion please uh, PM me as well ha? so sa ngayon meron dalawa dyan so meron ditong nasa kanan tapos doon sa may bandang gitna palabas meron din para hindi kayo mag-panel okay let's, let's all lift our tithes and offering and allow me to pray for you Father we thank you not only for the talk, but also for that moment you spent with us in our exam. And thank you for, for removing the walls and for us to experience your love. Thank you for helping us to be authentic in our following you, in our relationship with you. And this morning, Father, we want to honor you with our giving. Itong aming pagbibigay sa iyo comes from the heart of gratitude. That's why we are here giving to you the very blessings you give us. This is just a part of it. But we know, Lord, that you will bless this and that you will use this so that your work will continue in our midst. And Father, I lift up to you, my friends, as they give their tithes and offering. This coming week, I pray that you bless them Alam mo mga pangailangan ng mga kapatid kong ito. I pray that you pour out to them choices, blessings that you want for them. And in any situation that they might encounter this week, just remind them that you are always with them. Bless my friends. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come friends, with joy, with smile. Let's give our tithes and offering to Jesus. And see you all next Sunday. Have a great lunch, everyone. God bless you. When I think
think about your goodness, my heart is overcome. How come I could not begin to thank you for everything you've done? Cause you keep on loving me, and you cause my heart to sing. You, you make me come alive again. Stop. 